Hey guys, what's up? Pimmer right here, and welcome back to Let's Play Super Smash Bros. Brawl. In the last episode, we had boss battles with King DDD, and oh boy, that was a nightmare. Luckily, we're moving on to a heavyweight character that actually has got some speed behind him, unlike the last two, and that is Wolf O'Donnell, leader of the Star Wolf team and rival to Fox and the Cloud, and obviously the Star Fox franchise. But yes, unlike a lot of the heavyweights, Wolf's actually relatively fast, which is kind of funny because the next character coming up is also a heavyweight and also pretty fast, considering. Probably not as fast as Wolf, but still pretty fast. Which is kind of strange, just considering, uh, at least by Subspace Emissary, Emissary story, he's going to be one of the last three characters you get, depending on what order you go to get him, Jigglypuff, and Toon Link in. But I do actually think he is a very good character for boss battles, and, you know, we've already seen Fox and Falco, we know that Wolf's also carrying the Reflector, same as Fox and Falco, and the Reflector is a very nice advantage to have in particular against Duon and Meta Ridley, so he does, you know, that's a tremendous thing to have that helps quite a bit in both of those fights. He does carry a projectile as well, and with his blaster, it's very slow, it's more powerful, so in all honesty, it's probably not as good as Fox or Falco's, but at the same time, it's better than having nothing for those moments where you can't really do anything and the boss is just kind of sitting there attacking. He has very strong smash attacks for both uh, up, down, and side. Um, they all work quite well, so you're free to use any of those, really. All of his aerials are fairly strong, and they usually have one hit, so there's not a lot of animation. Uh, his recovery is a little bit weak for the most part. His side B will give him better horizontal distance. His uh, B will give him better vertical. But at the same time, hopefully recovery is not high on your list and hopefully you're not having to make said recovery. Being a heavyweight, obviously he will not get killed at incredibly low percentages if you play carefully, but I love that beautiful reflector just watching that HP just crash down, almost completely killing him. It's just, oh, it feels so good, man. Oh, I completely lost my train of thought watching that HP bar just crash down. So satisfying. I know I'm a nerd, but watching that HP bar of a boss just drop like a rock. There's something about it, man. Ready, go! But regardless of that, since he is a heavyweight, he's obviously not going to get killed at low percentages if you play correctly. Which hopefully you have been if you're trying to play them all in intense and you've been playing them in order like I have. Hopefully by now you've probably learned a thing or two. And I'd already played it, I believe I'd already played it with Wolf on the initial boss battles, like where I'd been trying to, you know, beat it with all the characters initially, and just as the side project. I'm pretty sure he was one of the characters I beat it with, because at that point, I think I'd beaten it with everybody that had a counter of some sort, a reflector, a PSI shield, you know, any a double team if you want to be fancy, instead of calling it a counter, but, you know, it's the same thing pretty much. I'd beaten with all those characters in Toon Link, so Wolf, I believe, was one of the characters I'd beaten with, so... already did it before, had a pretty good idea of what I was doing, and... You know, it was pretty easy with Wolf, it's... Very unlike a lot of the heavyweight characters. It doesn't feel like you're fighting with a heavyweight character, despite the fact he pretty much is heavyweight. It did not feel like a heavyweight character fight. It felt like I was fighting with a middleweight character, just... A Marth that was a little bit faster when it came to falling, and his attacks were slightly different, but not too much. It felt like I was playing as Marth for a fair amount, maybe not with quite the same range, and obviously not the same B moves, but for when it came to aerial attacks and standard attacks, it was actually relatively close. I did think I was dead right there, yes, in case you were wondering, and I was kind of surprised I didn't get killed, but that's the advantage of being heavyweight, because I guarantee if that had been a lightweight character, I'd have been gone. Absolutely would have been gone. Now, similar to... I don't know why I kept tripping with Wolf, by the way. It was rather odd. Uh, similar to Fox and Falco, yes, you can reflect his, uh, Rayquaza's uh, little laser ball back at him, which I did do in the fight, I believe. If you're wondering if the reflector does more damage with Wolf because most of his attacks do more, I don't remember if it actually does or not. Like, the reflected you know, item in question, projectile in question, I should say. I don't remember if it actually causes more damage or not. I could look it up, but that'd be kind of silly. Look it up in the middle of the post uh, commentation. So instead, we'll just watch him decimate Rayquaza. 
But yeah, you're pretty much free to do whatever you want here. You might want to be a little bit careful with the uh, forward smash, but even then, really not too bad. So looks like we have Crazy Hands. Hmm, who else do we have? Crazy Hand, Do On, and. I think that was it. There might have been one other that I wasn't paying attention to. If it was, I think it was Petey. I think those were the last ones. We'll find out in a minute now, won't we? Because Crazy Hand, let's face it, it's not going to last that long. Poor Crazy Hand used to be so strong, and now we're not even seeing him in the store anymore. I'm curious to see that for Smash 4, and I know I keep talking about it, but obviously it's a new Smash game coming out, and hopefully I can get this project done overall by the time that one comes out, because am I going to, whenever I finish Brawl, am I going directly to Smash 4? No! No, thank you. I'm, I would probably be very tired of recording Smash by then. As we already know, I've gotten kind of tired of the boss battles for Brawl, and probably don't need to show them all off, but what the heck, I was going to. Yeah, PD was the other one I missed. Cool. I actually remembered! Well, not so much remembered as just had deductive reasoning and slight memory from, you know, remembering which trophies were in the background and which ones were not. I think right here I was pretty much just waiting for him to shoot the projectile at me. Because I didn't want to play too risky here for the simple fact that if I got hit I was going to be in serious trouble. And then, yeah... The closer you get to him right then, when he, where he does the attack like that, the more shots that are going to be reflected, so... If you know he's doing that, then by all means, get very close to him. But not so close that um, you're standing, like, right up in his face. If you stand right up in his face, it will actually still hit you, so... Stand close, but not too close. If you stand far away, probably only one or two of the shots are going to hit, and you want as many as possible. And yeah, when he got down to that point, I was like, well, just go ahead and hit him. One hit will kill him, regardless of what it is. Standard attack, a B move, or his B projectile would have. And the interesting thing also, not that it really matters too much, is that whenever you attack with the um, well, standard B attack, whenever he pulls the gun out, there's a knife on the bottom of it. That actually inflicts a very small amount of damage as well. So, just a side note that if you use it close range, you'll get that little extra hit in. Actually, now that I think about it, now that I just saw it, actually, that is one thing you probably want to avoid is his standard aerial. It does have a lot of animation frames, but you're only going to get one frame of attack, so... I would, I would still probably avoid it. Anything that has a big animation on the attack, I would usually avoid. So probably that one. The rest of his aerials, as far as I remember, are all fine, so... That would probably be the only one I would watch out for. Of course, we're getting all the easy bosses now, thankfully. It actually is better to get them at the end rather than in the beginning. Because if you get them at the beginning, you'll run them over, and then you get to the harder ones, and they'll run you over. So on we go to Taboo. Ready, go! One of these days, I actually am going to bother to figure out whether you can reflect his uh, wing shards back at him or not. I don't think you can, but I should probably look into that. Oh well, we'll do it later. Heck, after I'm done recording all the audio for all these, which in this case will be the end of this one in Lucario's, then I'll, I'll probably go play through it again on easy and figure it out. I'm willing to bet the answer is no, but who knows. I will say Taboo is not hard to fight with Wolf, but it is a little bit more time consuming because Wolf only gets in like a few hit attacks here, and he also seemed to be teleporting up for the most part pretty high. So I had to jump up to get him. He wasn't kind of staying on the ground like this, and whenever he was, it wasn't for very long. So I did have to play a little bit more safe, but... Maybe it was just the fact that whenever I did it with the Ice Climbers, it was much shorter, and for DDD, I was playing a lot more careful. Who knows? It felt like I was going really fast, and then I just... I wasn't doing that much damage with the attacks compared to the rest of the bosses, which makes sense. He's the final boss, of course. So... I don't know, even then, it just it felt weird. And you're dead. I don't know, the fact that it took six and a half minutes, I figured it'd be around, like, just under six, like, five, 
50 or so, but either way, it's not that big a deal. So, with the leader of Starwolf having conquered the 10 enemy bosses, we will be moving on to the Aura Pokemon next, Lucario, in the next video. See you guys then.